Welcome back. I've entitled this episode, The Real Dirt on Records. I think it's time to get a few things on the table and make some things clear about vinyl and about record collecting. You'll hear it next here on The Sound of Safe and Sound, Texas. Thanks for joining me again. Well, had some time to settle in now that I've been back in the USA and catching up on some mail, catching up on some shipments of records that have come in, catching up on some uh, videos that I've uh, wanted to see that I marked before I uh, left and then uh, really didn't get time to watch. And, you know, overall, I guess what I'd really want to do as I think about it here is uh, vinyl collecting, record collecting, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's kind of like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, where have we heard that before? Well, anyway, it's really uh, something that can be so joyful and can also be so difficult and can also be so time-consuming, can also be so expensive, and it can be frustrating at times, uh, finding a, a great record you've been looking for out in the wild and then uh, realizing, well, maybe the quality of it isn't what you wanted. So really, I'd like to cover a few of these topics in a macro way and drill down to what I'm trying to get to specifically. So let's talk about the first item. We call it the hunt. Uh, it's when you're really looking for something that you've been wanting to get. Uh, this typically is something that isn't brand new, a brand new release, because those are generally not that hard to find. But it's something maybe that is a, an original pressing or a certain type of pressing that you're looking for, and it's difficult to find. Uh, the first piece of advice I would give a person is, you know, when you find it, strike while the iron's hot, because there often will be long lapses of time before you ever will see it again. So if you do see that in a store, see if you can play it. Uh, check out the return policy if they don't have a way to play it. But, um, but be careful in what you purchase, yet don't let the good ones get away. Sometimes um, we think we can do that. We look on Discogs. Uh, sometimes we order from there. Uh, I, I'm not here to judge Discogs. Discogs is an open environment. Uh, it has a lot of different sellers, and a good seller is a good seller, and an average seller is an average one, and a bad one is a bad one. And check the reviews out. Check how many positives they have. Uh, what's their percentage? Is it near 100 or at 100%? How much have they sold? You know, if they sold five albums and have 100%, that doesn't mean much, frankly. So uh, be careful. It's always buyer beware. But don't let one go when you can uh, get your fingers on it and you see it, because you'll often have that regret. Now, that said, when we get a record, it doesn't matter whether it's a new or used record. They all have one common thing to them in general, unless a seller tells you specifically they've ultrasonically cleaned that album before uh, they've shipped it to you or something of that nature. And that is, there's a chance that they are dirty. And that is especially true of new albums. Oh, new albums. They definitely need to be cleaned. Uh, as I've said before, sometimes I've had more debris come out of them than a used album. Fra factually, probably more often than not. So, you know, get a, get a decent cleaner of some kind, whether it's a lower end spin clean, which is just uh, uh, distilled water in a solution that they sell you. Uh, to clean them, and it's a very manual process. Um, there are more uh, advanced techniques in ultrasonics. There are more advanced techniques in manual. Uh, this video isn't about all those, but it is definitely to tell you that before you put an album on and before you uh, let your needle touch it, it would be well worth your while to clean it first. 
and that includes even audiophile albums. Uh, they come straight out of pressing plants. Um, so there's no, no record really is uh, exempt from this consideration. Unless you have a very well-known uh, seller who sells to you who says, hey, I cleaned this ultrasonically or I cleaned it on a degrader or something uh, that uh, level, <clears throat> then generally I'd say you're probably in, in pretty good shape as long as they put it in a clean sleeve and that type of thing. So please, please clean your records. Uh, you'll enjoy them a lot more when you listen to them. You'll definitely potentially do less damage to your stylus uh, as well. So uh, that's another dirty little secret is that records are dirty. Even the brand new ones are dirty. So take the time, take that extra three to five minutes or whatever it is and, and clean them and, uh, and it'll be well worth it. Uh, when you're using cleaning methods, make sure you uh, don't overuse the water in solution. Check how clean it is. Uh, change it out. Don't put a record that you're trying to clean in dirty a solution in water that just kind of defeats the purpose. So uh, don't be chintzy about it. Make sure that you uh, uh, rotate that um, water and that uh, liquid you use, whatever kind of formula you use, make sure you uh, do that so that you have the best chance of getting the cleanest record. Uh, the next dirty little secret about records is, and this isn't really a secret, I guess, is that they're going up in price. Uh, they're going up in price on the used market. I saw that in Europe. I've seen it in the U.S., uh, the new uh, market. I just saw uh, Foreigner's Greatest Hits. It's uh, It's got like a picture of... Uh, a jukebox, the old style they had at the uh, table where you ate and you could flip through and it had the 10 songs on it. So it's like 10 or 12 songs on this thing and it's like $38.99, one album. Really outrageous to me. <clears throat> it's not high, high speed uh, master, uh, half speed mastered. It's not audiophile. It's not, it's just, it's probably a digital to vinyl uh, copy of that. And you can probably go get an OG one of those, an original one of those, for 15 bucks max. So why would you why would you do that? I just don't see that that makes sense. So be careful. There's a lot of uh, repressing going on, a lot of rebranding going on, a lot of color vinyl going on. And uh, I have nothing against color vinyl. I, I have some. I bought some. Uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's very hard to find the groove on a color vinyl because of the coloration, whereas on black, it's usually easier to see where that gap is. Uh, I don't like that. I, I tend to find that the quality of, of the color vinyls seem to be a, a little lesser uh, generally. Uh, that's not across the board, but just generally, I would say if I took 10 albums I bought that were black vinyl and 10 albums that I bought that were color vinyl, uh, I probably would have a little uh, more noise uh, with the uh, colored vinyl than with the black vinyl for whatever reason. So um, uh, just be aware that, you know, those are out there, but they also are often digital to uh, vinyl. So they've already, you know, lost some of their inherent sonics uh, because of that. Uh, and so, you know, pays your money and takes your chances kind of thing. Personally, if it was uh, recorded before like 1986 or so, there's a good chance that it's mainly analog. And so those I definitely would rather have in an OG format because they uh, are going to be truer to the source. After that, uh, it's a mixed bag of uh, uh Digital uh, mixed in with analog, and as the years go went by, digital got more and more normalized. So, um, so another thing there again is the price of records. Do your homework. Look at what the prices are. You go into a store, the used store, and you think something's overpriced. Just you could always go to the person there and say, "Hey, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think this is a." A thirty-dollar record. I mean, I could go order it here for twenty-two dollars and pay five bucks shipping. I'll, you know, I'll give you twenty-six, twenty-seven bucks for it. You know, so see if they'll negotiate a little bit. Just it never hurts to try, uh, especially if you're buying a few albums there. You know, they usually help you out a little bit in in most cases, uh, especially if it's a you know an independent uh, a person. 
they tend to do that more often uh, than a chain would, for example. So, so the price of records is another dirty little secret. Storage of records is a, a, a thing that you have to manage. Do you have enough? Do you have the right kind? Um, Sleeveware. I, I was um, when I bought records early on. I wasn't worried about covers. I was more worried about the record and the vinyl and taking care of it. And you know, I just slid my vinyl into a shelf, and I didn't really, if the if the shrink that was on it stayed fine, if the shrink that was on it came off, pff, take it off. You know, so I have a lot of my original stuff um, has some wear on the cover and wear on the on the on the edges on the spine to be able to read it. Um, but I can assure you, the vinyl that's in there is is going to be top notch. Um, but uh, today, I put my, pretty much everything in a protective sleeve. Uh, to keep it from that wear factor uh, that happens. And I put everything in a, a, a rice paper sleeve, like a MoFi type sleeve, uh, unless it already comes with something like that. So uh, protect your records. It's worth it. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't do that early on. And I'm sure it, it has devalued some of the records I have, at least, uh, you know, for those who really are looking for sharp covers from back then a lot of mine are not going to meet that criteria but uh, I'll put up the vinyl itself against uh, pretty much anything so uh, again <clears throat> it's another little cost to add in <clears throat> if you buy those in bulk they're a lot cheaper you know you buy a few hundred let's say uh, you're going to definitely pay less than you would if you bought 50 so um, so it all adds up Another little secret I'm going to talk about here when it comes to uh, vinyl is, in fact, the fact of warpage. You got to be careful with uh, handling of records, where you store them, how you store them, storing them um, vertically as opposed to uh, laying them down. You know, you put them, you're going to put them in, uh, you know, you're going to slide them in like I have here. They go this way. They don't, we don't lay them down like this and stack them on top of each other. That weight and that imbalance will cause a certain warpage to occur over time with that weight on it. So definitely not a good way to do it. So those are just a few things that I think are some of the dirty little secrets about vinyl. I hope they've been helpful to you. Again, if you like this video, please press the like button and subscribe as well. Tell your friends. And if you have any comments, please put them down in the comments and I'll uh, respond to you. So for now, take care. Thanks for watching The Sound of Safe and Sound Texas.